more than a programming problem. This is more of a mathematical problem. And I say that because once you understand the maths behind it, this problem becomes fairly simple to solve. So let's see what is it all about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see where do you even begin. We will start off with a mathematical proof and then come up with an efficient solution. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. It is very important to understand what does this problem statement actually mean. So you are given an array of positive integers and at most k operations. So what are these operations? For every operation, what you can do is you can pick up any element from the array. That is your choice. And then you can increment it by one. That makes up one operation. So you are allowed a total of k operations. And what do you have to do? You have to make these operations in such a way that the product of the numbers that you're getting, that is the maximum possible product. So these are a lot of words. What does it actually mean? So for example, I have this test case over here with me. The array elements are 0, 4 and the value of k is 5. That means you can do 5 operations. So how do sample operations look like? What you can do is you can pick up the element 0 and then increment it by 1. So now my array becomes 1, 4. Let us say for my second operation, I pick up the element 4. This will become a 5 and now my array becomes 1, 5. Similarly, let us say I pick up 5 again. This becomes a 6 and now my array is 1, 6. I have now completed 3 operations. Let us do 2 more operations. This time I will pick up 1. So my array becomes 2, 6. And let's say I pick up 2 again. So my array becomes 3, 6. So I did 5 operations. And what is the product of elements that I'm getting? If you find the product, the product turns out to be 18, correct? But this is not the maximum product. The maximum product is obtained when you do five operations on the number zero itself. That means for every operation, you increment the value of this number zero by one. So what will happen in those five operations? First of all, you will become one comma four then 2 comma 4 and then ultimately 5 comma 4 and now if you find out the product the product turns out to be 20 and in fact 20 is the maximum product possible you can see that there can be so many ways you can perform these k operations and you have to tell me what is the maximum product possible when you are done with these k operations so with two numbers at least you can say that okay the number of operations could be easy but this array can be of any length. For example, in my second array, I have an array of the length four. I have these four elements and I am allowed two operations. That means for every operation, I need to pick any one of these numbers and increment it by one. So you can see that I have so many different variations possible. I can pick up six and three, or I can pick up three and three, or I can pick up two and six, and it can be anything, correct? For this particular test case, you will find the maximum product when you apply two operations. First of all, on the integer 2, then your array becomes 6, 3, 3 and then a 3. And then once again, you apply the operation on the number 3. Then you get 6, 4, 3 and then a 3. Notice that even if you have multiple digits of the same element, then whenever you are applying an operation, you have to increment only one of those digits, not all of them. So after applying these two particular operations, you will now obtain your maximum product and the maximum product in this scenario will come out to be 216. No matter what other combination do you try, let us say you try 6 and 2 or let us say you try 3 and 3. In every other combination, the maximum product will be less than 216. So for this particular test case, 216 is the answer. Now, if you feel that this problem statement is even clear to you, feel free to first try it out. There is also one more thing that you need to take care about. Since this product can get very huge and it can get out of the bounds of the integer limit. So what you need to do is after multiplying all of the numbers, you need to modulo it by 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. 
this is not just a random number it is a very important number that you will see a lot while your coding journey and someday we are going to talk more about it but for now let us dive into the solution to come up with a solution let us take up a sample test case you can see that i have an array and this has five elements i am allowed four operations now it must be already clear to you that these four operations can have so many different combinations you can apply all four operations just on a single element or you can apply all these four operations on different elements you can also distribute them you can apply three operations on six and one operation on four right so basically coming up with a brute force solution is very tricky you cannot think about all the different possibilities and then arrive at a conclusive answer that yes this is the maximum sum possible so certainly we need to find out some definitive way and that is where mathematics will help us we know for a fact that at every instance we can only increment a number just by one right that is the only choice we have so for a moment forget about the problem altogether let us say that i have two integers possible and we will try to decide that hey where should i increment a one such that my product is larger so in the current scenario when i have two numbers x and y let us assume that x is greater than y correct and now the product of these two numbers will be x y right when you are doing a operation either you will increment x or you will increment y these are the only two choices available at every scenario correct so if i am incrementing x what does my array become my array becomes x plus 1 and then a y and if you find out the product what do you get you will get x y plus y right and now let us compare the different scenario this time we are incrementing y so what do you get the array now becomes x and then y plus 1 when you take out the product what do you get the product this time is x y plus x and if you try to compare both of them x y is common in both of them so this will not affect the product the only different factor is y and x and if you notice x is greater than y so in fact this product this will be larger than when you had incremented x so try to think intuitively it comes to your mind that okay when i have this array then if i want a maximum product then i should increase my larger number first correct but in fact the reverse is true if you are incrementing the smaller number then you are getting a larger product let me make this clear to you with an example let us say i have an array like this 2 comma 7 and i am only allowed one operation the current product is 14 right and it may feel that after doing one operation if i increment the larger number then my product should increase more right so if i increment 7 that means i get 2 comma 8 that changes my product to 16 however the truth is that if you increment the smaller number that means 3 comma 7 then your product changes to 21 so we can say that at any given instance if i am choosing the minimum number possible and incrementing it by 1 that will tend to give me the maximum product possible right so in our problem let us say this was my sample array correct and let us say the value of k was just 1 you are allowed one operation then what will you have done you will select whatever is the minimum number amongst these elements and then increment it by 1 so your array will become and this array is going to give you the maximum possible product amongst every number if you had incremented it by 1 so this was the scenario when k was 1 if k is 2 then what will you do after you have incremented 1 then once again you will search for a minimum element between them and then increment it by 1 so basically at every iteration you will find out the minimum element and then increment it by 1 to ultimately find the maximum product possible so based upon this idea how will the solution of this particular test case look like i have my test case over here right and the value of k is 4 so what do you do 
you pick up the smallest number possible in this. The smallest number possible is 2. So for the first step, I will increment 2 and my array becomes 63435. This completes one operation. For the next operation, once again, you have to search for the minimum element. You have two threes available. You can pick any one of them. I pick the first one and then I increment it. As soon as I increment, my array becomes something like this. Once again, repeat the same process. Find out the minimum element. It is 3. So for the next step, I will increment 3 again and my array starts to look like this. In this array, once again, repeat the same process. Find the minimum element that is 4. So you can increment any of these 4s and my final array becomes this. If you find out the product of all of these elements, you will get 2400. And that is the maximum product possible. So you can see that just by having a simple proof, I was able to apply the greedy technique on this particular problem. At every instance, I was being greedy. What I did was, I chose the smallest number possible and incremented it by 1. So using a greedy approach, we can correctively determine that this will be the maximum product possible out of the array when you are given k number of operations. So we will try to use this technique and then come up with a solution. And let us try to do a dry run. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample array and the value of k that is passed in as an input parameter to the function maximum product. So at every instance, we must know that, hey, what is the minimum element in the array? To find out this minimum element, either you can scan the array every time, but that will change the time complexity to order of n square. So we need an efficient approach and an efficient approach will be a priority queue. So the first step that we do is we create a priority queue and the property of a priority queue is that any time I will try to pop out an element, I will get the smallest element. So I have my priority queue ready over here and in the next step, I add all of my elements of this array to my priority queue. When these elements will get added, they get added in a ascending order. After this, what do you need to do? You need to perform K operations, right? And for every operation, what do you have to do? You get the minimum element from your priority queue. So this will pop out 2. And what do you do with this 2? You do a minimum element plus plus. So this 2 now changes to 3. And what do you do next? You add this element back to your priority queue. So 3 will get added back to your priority queue. Right now, there is no element that is less than 3. So this still remains at the top. Next time when you pop it, 3 will again pop out and this gets incremented to 4. This 4 will now get again back added to the queue. This time when you add this element, this queue will get reshuffled and you will have the smallest element at the top. So this completes two operations, right? This loop will go on for k number of operations. And at every instance, it will try to remove the smallest element possible, increment it by one, and then put it back in the queue. So basically, this queue will hold the final array after all of the operations have been completed. And once these k operations have completed, what is your next step? The next step is fairly simple. You just find the product. And to find the product, what will you do? You will keep on popping elements one by one from your queue until it is completely empty. And then ultimately you will return this result as your answer. Notice that the time complexity of this solution is order of n log n because you need that time to maintain your priority queue and pop out the minimum element at every instance. And the space complexity of this solution is order of n because you need that extra space to maintain your priority queue. We missed out one important fact though. What about the mod value? We see that we had initialized this mod value over here. But where do we actually use it? We are using this mod value every time we find a result. So every time you multiply a number, just do it modulo this particular number. That is because the modulo property is commutative. It simply means that a into b modulo x will give you the same answer as a modulo x into b modulo x. So it does not matter that you find out the entire product first and then do a modulo. You can modulo each of the results and then multiply them to find the final answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. 
I know that you might be wondering, will I ever get this type of a question in my coding interviews? Maybe not. But it is very vital to understand how computers actually work. And most of it is mathematics, correct? And while you're solving this problem, it gives you new horizons that, hey, when I am attacking a problem, what all can I explore? Think about it. When you just started to solve this problem, we had no idea where to even begin. There were so many possibilities possible, recursion, permutations, and so many things. But if you take a step back and try to think, hey, what is the core logic behind it? Then you see that how easy the problem became, right? So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other conceptual videos which involve some core concept of mathematics? Just tell me all of those problems and when you come back in the future, this video will become a very good collection and you can explore all of these. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.